Our brain actually uses a lot of additional molecules. About 90% of the cells use glutamate and GABA, but then there's the rare cell that uses an unusual molecule. And if it's the one in 10,000 cell that has a different molecule, whether it's nitric oxide or maybe a D-amino acid like D-aspartate, it's hard to find that cell and it's hard to characterize it. And really the way to find it and characterize it is to move your me measurements down to the individual cell level. And so what we've done is by moving to smaller and smaller scale, we've been finding uh, new chemistry, new molecules within uh, unusual cells. And so one of the reasons that they're poorly understood is because the ones, uh, the, the chemicals, the cell to cell signaling molecules, the neurotransmitters, neuromodulators, um, uh, aren't known in all the cells. Single cell measurements depend on success on sampling, as I said, sample preparation, and as well as measurement. And uh, oftentimes, what limits our ability to characterize what's in a cell is, is really related to how much is present and detectability. And so technological advances that improve the detectability with mass spectrometry, with laser-induced fluorescence detection or others, really are enabling. So as mass spectrometry becomes more sensitive uh, and higher throughput, we can do uh, a greater numbers of individual cells and detect a greater number of molecules. And so uh, technology really is changing our ability to do this. The other thing that's happening is that uh, mass spectrometry can be combined with, say, vibrational spectroscopy. And so we're working with uh, people that do high-resolution vibrational imaging of the brain. Uh, they can get single-cell infrared or Raman spectra from thousands of cells, and then we pick the cells and do mass spectrometry on it. So we can actually uh, hyphenate and correlate different approaches to get more chemical information uh, on the same cells. And that's actually something I think will be growing. In some ways, while we know a lot more about the functioning of the brain, uh, than we ever have, we actually still have not uh, done what we need to do to solve um, issues related to neurological diseases or, uh, uh, or mental disorders. So it's still very hard uh, and, uh, to treat, for example, anxiety, depression, uh, and a lot of other diseases. And so obviously more information will allow us to understand what goes wrong, uh, either you know, as the transition from a healthy to a diseased brain. Uh, it's been exciting to see that uh, new molecules discovered uh, in the brain, like uh, D-serine, uh, now are implicated, or its formation and um, degradation are implicated as, as being uh, awry in, in a disease like schizophrenia. And so there's a case where a new molecule was discovered, not by our group, but by others, and the enzymes used to form and degrade it uh, are now known to, to, to be implicated in the disease. And so I think as we learn more about uh, new peptides, new D-amino acids, other molecules, uh, the presence, the release, their degradation, and their interactions with cells will have a better opportunity to understand uh, a lot of uh, important diseases and then obviously uh, use these as pharmacological targets to hopefully uh, you know, alleviate the symptoms. PitCon is um, uh, a lot of fun meeting. In some ways, it's the heart of, uh, uh, it's the meeting uh, actually in the world to go to for analytical chemistry. Uh, it brings together people in all the subfields of analytical chemistry at one place. And so, if I'm doing mass spectrometry, going to the mass spec meeting is useful. Uh, but PitCon is, is really good to see the newest equipment and newest technologies and talks from areas that are a little bit outside of the norm. It's also an important meeting for networking, and it's a great place uh, to. Um, actually see uh, both the latest advances uh, in technology, the newest instruments across a wide range of analytical chemistry.